Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to follow up on our gem and engine tutorials by covering how to use a private GitHub repo with our gem file. So in the previous video, you might recall, we first created a gem, then we created that uh, little engine, which we have right here, uh, which basically just allows you to include this post scaffold in multiple Rails apps. So maybe this is like a core piece of functionality that you wanted to break out from one application and share this mini Rails app with multiple other Rails applications. So you made an engine, but you don't want to open source it because it's sort of the thing that brings in, you know, the money. So you want to keep it private. So you're not using a Ruby gem for this gem. Uh, you're just using a GitHub repo, for example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this repo that this is hosted on, uh, which is over here, the Rails engine repository. We're going to private this repository and we're going to uh, try to use that in our gem file over here and see sort of what this might look like. So let's go ahead, let's come over to our settings here. Let me full screen this. Uh, and if we click on settings, we come down here to the bottom, I think, and change visibility, change to private. We'll say, I wanna make this private. I understand, make this private. And now this is completely private. Now, because we made this private, uh, the blog engine locally, it, it really depends. Sometimes it doesn't like this, sometimes it does. Uh, in our case, I think we're probably fine here. But let's go ahead and let's test this. We'll just push up a version three over here and say testing posts. You can then do a git add dot git commit dash m and we'll say uh, update index and then do a git push type yes. And now that should be good. So let's come over here to our uh, code base and let me just make sure that just got updated. Looks good. And now what we can do is we can come over to our uh, actual application here and in this one we have this gem file so if we cd out of here into our actual rails app and run a bundle update we should hopefully see after we type yes uh, and it's going to be upset here because we're, we're changing where where we're doing this but uh, we should see that the version was updated now in this case it's because i have my ssh key already set up so i'm just you know pulling and pushing like i normally would uh, if you're not familiar with how to do that go look for like a github ssh key and you can look for generating a new SSH key. And then there should be like a SSH key gen command. You generate this and then you go over to your profile. Uh, you go to settings and you go down to SSH and GPG keys and you just paste it in there. So that part's pretty simple, uh, but let's say you wanna push this up and you want to have like, you know, access to this repository in a safe way. How can you do that? Again, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is gonna be the absolute worst way, which is you can actually just include your username and password in this entire request. Now, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do this, but I'm gonna ask that you make good choices. Uh, and the way you can do this is something along the lines of like, uh, if I just get rid of this, it's gonna be like HTTPS colon slash slash Dean out, which is like my username, right? Username colon password password at uh, github.com slash uh, username slash log engine dot get. So in my case, this would be like Dean out, Dean out. And then for my password, it would of course be password because I, I always make it password. Uh, so this is one option. Now, of course, there's multiple reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. Uh, the most obvious is if I run a git status right now, we'll see that our gem file has that in it. If I run a git diff on the gem file itself, we'll see that if I were to push this up right now, my password and username would be pushed straight up to this repo, which means if anyone ever got their eyes on this repository, although it's private, uh, they would now have access to the, uh, the creator of the repository's account and who knows what else they have access to. So probably don't want to go with this one. The second option, which is a bit more sane, is going to be to create a personal access token. The personal access tokens can be restricted to a single repository. Uh, well, I guess, okay, this is sort of the third option. Uh, and it allows you to just like restrict what people can do with that token. So if you have the token, you get like read permissions for this repository, which means you can look at it, but you can't do anything else. The second option, the one I glanced over, would be to make a separate account and then include your credentials in, in this for it. So you create another account, give it access to this repository, and then you put that username and password in here and push that up instead. Still wouldn't recommend doing that, but it's a little bit more secure than having your own account uh, with its credentials in there. 
In terms of the personal access token, that's going to be probably the way to go. Um, it's actually not that hard to create those. So to do it, we're going to come over here. Uh, I'm just going to go to another GitHub page real quick. Uh, and then from here, we can click on our profile, go down to settings. On the left hand side, we should see the developer settings all the way on the bottom. We can then go over to personal access tokens and fine grain tokens, unless they change what that's called in the future. We can then click generate new token. We can name this, we'll call this Rails Engine. We'll set it to expire in like, uh, let's say, I don't know. Uh, you can either have a custom time or just do whatever you want. In my case, I'm gonna go with just a custom time, have it expire in a day. Say you already know what it's for. And then we can come down here. Our resource, a resource owner, you might be able to select a different account. In my case, I only have one, so I'm gonna go with this. And then for our repository access, we'll go with only selected repositories. We'll search for our repository, which is the Rails engine. We know it's the right one because it has a little lock next to it. We can then scroll down for account permissions. This is gonna be stuff like blocking users, following accounts, etc. Don't give any permissions for this. For repository permissions, there's something in here for like reading, uh, the contents, uh, this one right here, repository contents commits, branches, downloads, releases, and merges. For this, you wanna go to read only. So now you're only gonna have two permissions. One is gonna be this contents and one is the mandatory metadata, which is the uh, just some basic metadata about the repository. We can scroll down here, we can see we have two permissions. One is for content, one is for metadata and zero account permissions. So we'll click generate token. That gives us our token uh, and it's telling me something went wrong. Don't think I've ever seen that before, but uh, who knows? Uh, we can then come over here <laughs> and we'll, we'll try to use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paste this in as a comment right here, just so that I can use this right now. Uh, and now we have a couple options. The first one's gonna be to take this entire token and just put it in this, uh, this line right here. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna tab over. And instead of having this HTTPS link, what we're actually gonna do here is we're going to start with the token, I think. We're gonna do the entire token, and then there's two different ways people suggest doing this. One is with, uh, instead of a password, it's x-oauth-basic after the colon. Uh, and the other one is uh, the one that I personally use, uh, which I think is just oauth2, is how I have it, oauth2. Uh, but again, I don't really set this up a lot, so I'm gonna have to check my gem file real quick. Make sure, yeah, it's uh, it's actually the other way around. It's gonna be uh, OAuth2, colon, then your key, uh, then at uh, github.com slash, and then the rest of your repository. So your format here is gonna be uh, git, colon, https, colon, slash, slash, uh, OAuth2, colon, and then personal access token, at github.com dot 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 right so this is what you're going to be doing now the reason why i suggest not doing this i don't know if i can get it to do it here but i'll give it a shot if we do a bundle install right now uh oops this actually needs to be rails engine go ahead and run a bundle again to hopefully get this to run uh, and now if we full screen this we can see this is being pulled from here so that's pulling with our personal access token that's great but the reason why I don't like doing this is because now your token is listed here instead of your username. And this is still not really great. So what we can do instead is we could store this in an environment variable if we wanted to. And you might be tempted to do something like this. Come into your repo, right click new file, .env. And then in here you would paste in something like, uh, here's my GitHub personal access token. And then we grab that personal access token from here. We cut it out. We paste it in here. So that's in our .env file. We then add this .env file to our git ignore. So we say .env, right? We come over to our gem file. And now that we have that ignored, we can come up to the top. We can say, all right, before we do anything else, I want to require .env slash load if file exists .env, right? And then we can come down here and we can do something like, uh, let's do instead of this OAuth2, you can do OAuth2 colon, uh, and then we can grab uh, ENV with the uh, inside of square brackets and uh, single quotes, GitHub, GitHub underscore PAT. And we can go ahead and run this and run a bundle install. And then right here, we can now see in our git status, 
if we do a git diff for the gem file, uh, we only have this Rails engine being added there and our .env. My problem with this, uh, and this is something that's a little bit sneaky that you might not think about originally, but take a look at the git diff for the gem file .lock. If we open that up, we can see there's been a remote added. The remote has our uh, OAuth2, and then here's our entire personal access token being listed in this uh, gem file .lock. So that's really not gonna work. So there's another way we can do this, which will also work, I believe, uh, and that is to just revert this to uh, the SSH right here. Go ahead and we'll revert this. Just leave it like git at github.com, dnow, rails engine.get. And then we want to uh, come over to our terminal. And in our terminal, we want to export a blog personal access token equal to, uh, and this is going to be equal to our environment variable here. So we'll just go ahead and we'll do this. Leave it equal to this entire string, hit enter. And now what we can do is run a bundle config github.com with uh, what, what do we call it? Blog underscore personal underscore access underscore token, uh, just like that. And now if we run a bundle install, now this should be working with our personal access token as opposed to uh, how it was working previously. But of course we wanna test this. So we're gonna come over to DigitalOcean, click on droplets in the create dropdown. Then once this loads up, we'll click on New York. We'll choose a marketplace image for Ruby on Rails. Go ahead and grab that. Scroll down here, click 14 bucks a month. Then we'll scroll down here and we'll say Rails Engine as the name and click Create Droplet. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll go ahead, we'll copy this IP. Come over here, I'll open up a new tab in my uh, Windows terminal and scroll in. And then we'll do a SSH root at and then this IP address, type yes hopefully let us in here. And now I'm gonna grab this uh, Rails engine repo and I'll do a git, uh, well, let's just do a make dir for uh, Rails, cd into Rails. And now in here, I'll do a git clone for this uh, gem real quick. And it's gonna ask me for my username because it's a private repository, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and not do that. Instead, I'm going to run a Rails new video create a brand new Rails project in here using whatever is available. Uh, and then in there, I'm going to grab this Rails engine uh, and I'm going to mount it. And then we're gonna see if we can actually access it. So we'll just go ahead, we'll do this. We'll CD into the video. In this video, we now want to export. Uh, what did we do over here? It was export this. I'm gonna grab this entire command with our uh, token again. We have export, uh, oops, export blog personal access token. Right there is equal to uh, our personal access token. I'll go ahead and I'll run that. Next, I'm gonna come into the uh, nano gem file. And before you roast me for using nano, I tend to do this because it's easier for people that are following along to see how to actually use this. So in, in this uh, gem file, we now want to grab the same line that we had over here, which is just using git at github.com. We'll go ahead and we'll run this. Go ahead and save this, hit control O, enter, control X. Uh, and now that we have that, we want to uh, run that bundle config command again, right? So we'll run bundle uh, config and we want to run this one. So we'll come over here and we'll just run bundle config github.com with the personal access token environment variable. Now we'll go ahead and run a bundle install command. It says fetching from dnout at rails engine, whatever. And we've now pulled from that repository using that personal access token. The important thing here is uh, we don't have this token like in our uh, gemfile.lock, right? So if we open this up, you can see there's a remote listed, uh, but our personal access token is not. We've also didn't have to set up like an SSH key that's associated with our account or anything else. It's just running off of this token. And the only way this is really gonna get compromised is if someone gets access to the environment variables on this machine. But the nice thing about these personal access tokens is if I don't want someone to be able to access it anymore, I just come in here and click delete. So if this ever gets uh, compromised, you can just delete this 
as soon as you're aware of it. Now that's not going to stop people from like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, take a look at their source code and see what, what gems they use or whatever. Uh, so that's not going to stop it entirely. But if someone gets access to your machine, you probably have a bigger problem than, uh, than just, you know, trying to hide your, your, your source code. <laughs> like at that point, you're, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, but yeah, so this is probably going to work for your purposes. I think this is probably the best approach I can at least think of. Uh, because you can't really like encrypt your personal access token using the Rails credentials because this is running in Bundler, so you don't have access to that yet. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this is uh, enough to show you that uh, you can in fact uh, go this route. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.